Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Why do you look the same as you did last week? Well, I have the time and I'm deciding to make all these videos in one day pretty much. But anyway, today we're going to be looking at the Airtable system again and this video might be interesting for more people because today we're going to be creating a cost per mile calculator using the Airtable system system. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Ready? Let's go. All right, guys, welcome back. So I still sound like a frog because I'm still not feeling better, but it is what it is. Anyway, today's an exciting video that I think a lot of you guys will benefit from. And we are going to be using the Airtable system in order to create a cost per mile calculator. And we'll take it a little bit further. Actually, we're going to look at profit per mile, and all of that good stuff. So let's get started. We'll start, of course, as always, by adding a base right here. Okay, now that we have our base, let's rename it to cost per mile calculator. Let's uh, give it a nice little color here. Um, and we are ready to start. Now, what we're actually going to do right now is we're going to go back to our operating expenses spreadsheet and I'll show you why in a second. So just click on this box right here and it will take you back home and we'll go from there. Okay, so what I want you to do right now is I want you to click on your operating expenses spreadsheet if you have already made it. And as you can see, I pre-filled it with some expenses uh, just to be able to show you how this cost per mile calculator works. But what I want you to do right now is I want you to add one more column here and you will name it type of expense, click single select, and then we'll add two options, fixed and variable. Okay, perfect. And now let's go through these expenses and name them. Are they fixed or variable? And you have to do the same thing for your spreadsheet. Okay, so I have categorized my expenses. Now, just to give you an idea in case you don't know, fixed expenses are those that do not change from month to month, whereas variable expenses do change. So for example, any uh, state taxes, if the taxes, fuel, maintenance, they're all variable expenses because they're not set in stone. But things like truck and trailer payments right here, we have a truck payment, we have a trailer payment, insurance as well, these are fixed expenses. Load board, it's the same expense month after month. Okay, now let's go back to our new base we created, which we named cost per mile calculator. So here we go. We have our table right here, our new base. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to create a new tab. So you click on add or import. And what you're going to do is you're going to click on sync data from Airtable base. So once you do that, you will have this little window pop up here. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to choose a base. Uh, so for me, I'm going to choose my loads. You have to choose your load base. The table, you will want to click on the loads, not the drivers, shippers, brokers, click on loads. And for the view, select the grid view. Now, most likely it will show you that this view does not have an active shared view link. So click on open view, you'll get a new tab. And what you're going to do is you want this base to be shareable, the base where you have all your loads, you want it to be shareable. So what you do is you click share view, create a shareable grid view link, and just click this, allow data in this view to be synced to other bases. That's all you have to do. Then click out of here and you're good to go. Click next, click next and create a table. There we go. And let's rename this to loads. Perfect. So now you have all those loads that you filled out. And yes, I filled out some loads here as well. Uh, all those loads that you filled out will show up right here and they will be syncing as you're putting more loads in they will be updating in this cost per mile calculator base as well next thing i want you to do add or import and under base you will click your expense base where you track all of your expenses in my case i named it operating expenses the table will be operating expenses and the view will be grid view. Again, it will show you that this view is not shareable, so open view, then click share view, 
create a shareable grid view link and click on the second uh, line right here, X out of here, and you're good to go. Click next, next, create table, and we're going to rename this to expenses. Perfect, so now you are ready to start creating your table, which is this first tab right here. So let's go through this. Let's uh, delete some of these fields. And what we're going to do is rename this first uh, column to month. Now I track my cost per mile on a monthly basis. You can decide to track it on a weekly basis if you so choose. I choose month, so I'm going to put month here and let's put April 2022. It's not 2020 anymore, Miranda. Uh, now, next thing you wanna do is click this plus sign and choose number. And we're going to name it total miles. Uh, precision one decimal point, all good, create field. Now, before we move on, let's go to our expenses tab. This is something you need to do. Create a grid view. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to create two views, one for only variable expenses and one only for fixed expenses. So how are we going to do that? You're going to create and click on grid and we're going to call this fixed expenses create a new view. So it will basically copy everything in your regular view to your fixed expenses view. But what we're going to do now is we are going to filter. So click filter, add condition, and then you click where type of expense is fixed expense. That's it. Only your fixed expenses will show up here. Next, you want to do the same thing for variable expenses. So again, create grid, name it variable expenses, create a new view. Again, it will just auto populate what's in your grid view, but now we just have to filter, add condition where type of expense is variable expense. Okay, pretty easy. Now back to table one. Now click the plus sign, link to another record, click on expenses, and then I want you to click this limit record selection to a view. Select a view, we're going to click Fixed Expenses, and we're going to name this Fixed Expense. We do the same thing for Variable Expenses. Plus, link to another record, Expenses, click this second line right here, Only Variable Expenses, and then we name it. Next, click Plus, link to another record, Loads, Create Field, Perfect, it auto named it loads. Okay, so now is the fun part. Before we do anything else and build out this table further, we are going to put in some of our fixed expenses, variable expenses and loads. All you have to do, so we're in April 2022 here, click on this cell right here, you're going to click the plus sign and all your fixed expenses with the dates paid will show up right here. So make sure that the date paid matches to the month you're referring to and then just add all of these. And the best part is once you add one, it will not repeat. So all you have to do is add everything and all your fixed expenses will be right here. Same thing for variable expenses. Click the plus sign and then add all of your variable expenses. Make sure the dates match and you're good to go. It's a pretty fast process. Same thing for loads. You want to have all the loads you did in April of 2022, let's say, in this cell. So click plus and enter in all of your loads right here. Okay, just make sure those dates match to the month you are referring to. So as long as it's in April, it should go under April. So add all of those, okay. That's it, we are done here. Next, click the plus sign and I want you to click roll up. So what that's going to do is it's going to sum up everything. So the first roll up will be total income, okay? So here you have to choose a field in this table. Income comes from loads, right? So we are going to click loads, 
Then we have to choose a field. Of course, we cannot uh, sum up the driver or load status. We need the total due or the load rate. I usually do it by the flat load rate because additional compensation is not always paid, such as detention and tonus. So I want to sum up the load rate. And then what you want to do is in this box, you want to type in SUM, sum, okay? And then don't forget about formatting right here. Make sure it's currency, create the field. Look at this. It right away took all of these loads right here and it summed up the load rates. Let's see if it matches. 53,875, 53,875. Awesome, perfect. Next, we want to do the same thing for the fixed expenses and the variable expenses. So let's do that. Plus, roll up, total fixed. Now, what we're going to do is choose a field in this table. We are looking at fixed expenses. And of course, we're looking at the amount. And again, we're going to put in sum. Make sure the formatting is currency, create a field. These are the total fixed expenses for this month. Perfect, same thing for variable expenses. Plus, roll up, we're going to choose variable expenses this time, amount, sum, total variable, formatting is currency, create field. These are the total variable expenses. Okay, next thing we want to do is we want to add a formula. And what we're going to do is start looking at everything on a per mile basis rather than a total basis. So add and then click formula right here. So what we want to do is fixed per mile. Now, how do we create a formula where it shows us the cost per mile for our fixed expenses? Well, it's pretty easy. Click right here. And then what you want to do is you want to do total fixed. Just start typing in the name of the field, total fixed divided by total miles right here, which you will put in total miles. Make sure the formatting is currency create a field. Right now it will not show anything because we do not have the total miles put in, but I'll show you how that works. Now, next thing we want to do is also the same thing for variable costs. Click formula, variable per mile. Again, what we're going to do is total variable now divided by the total miles. Formatting has to be currency, create a field, you're good. Now you want to do the total cost per mile. How do you do that? Again, take formula right here, total cost per mile. We're going to do fixed per mile plus variable per mile. Okay, make sure the formatting is currency create field. Now I want you to create a field for revenue per mile. How do you do that? Add field formula. We'll name it revenue per mile. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the total income, total income divided by total miles. Okay. Formatting has to be currency, create field. And now, after doing all of this, we can do a profit per mile. How do we do that? Add field, formula, revenue per mile, minus total cost per mile. Formatting, currency, not percent, currency, create field. Okay, so right now, and we have to rename it. Oops, profit per mile, perfect. All right, so now this will auto-populate as soon as I'm going to put in the mileage. So let me just remove this as much as I can. Okay, now you can see everything. Okay, so for this month, let's say you're driving in a team and you drove, I don't know, 21,100 miles. Look at this. It auto-populated everything right away. So you can see that your fixed cost per mile is 20 cents. 
your variable cost per mile is a dollar. So your total cost per mile is $1.20. Now your revenue per mile was $2.55. So that's kind of your average uh, uh, rate that you have been grabbing, uh, rate per mile. And therefore your profit per mile is a dollar and 35 cents. And you can do this for every single month. So I know that this is a little bit more confusing than the other Airtable uh, videos I have made just because there's a lot of calculations, a lot of formulas that you have to do. But one thing I can tell you is as long as you set up the table the way I showed you, you don't really have to do anything else. Just make sure to stay organized, make sure the correct loads are going in the correct cells. Like don't put a load that you did in March in the April column. Make sure your expenses are organized correctly, meaning you know where your variable expenses are, you know where your fixed expenses are and then it should give you the correct calculations where you can plan uh, on how to operate in your business, especially in this crazy market. Uh, I hope you guys found this video helpful and I will see you in the next one.